Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the University of Pittsburgh's Celebration of Innovation. Today we celebrate the accomplishments of Pitt faculty and student innovators and regional small business entrepreneurs. They are being recognized for turning big ideas and research discoveries into new products, services, and companies that can make a positive impact in people's lives. As we get ready to celebrate these accomplishments, it's a perfect opportunity to step back for a moment and look at the regional innovation ecosystem. Thanks to the concerted effort of a wide cross-section of public and private stakeholders, we're seeing steady and sometimes dramatic growth in the resources and infrastructure that help ideas and discoveries get from concept to the marketplace where they can contribute to the regional economy while they improve people's lives. That's especially evident of late in the life sciences in particular, as this year Pitt opens a new research facility next door to the UPMC Hillman Cancer Center. This puts more Pitt scientists and physicians together in and around the clinics where patients await new therapies. It also leverages our deep expertise in immunotherapy, cancer research, and clinical care. Also nearing completion is the Vision Restoration and Physical Rehabilitation Facility at UPMC Mercy Hospital. These are two really exciting fields for innovative therapies and technologies. This nine-story facility will house collaborative spaces for clinicians, researchers, educators, and industry partners. You can think of that facility as one end of a life science corridor that extends along the Monongahela River through pit facilities at Bridgeside Point and reaching all the way to Hazelwood Green, the site of more exciting developments. This fall, the R.K. Mellon Foundation announced the biggest single project donation in its history, $100 million to fund Pitt Bioforge at Hazelwood Green. With this project, Pitt will bring an entirely new commercial manufacturing sector to Pittsburgh, a highly specialized biomanufacturing facility, which will bring new cell and gene therapies and other novel treatments to patients. It will be a place where Pitt research teams come together with industry partners around high-tech manufacturing and wet lab capabilities, along with innovation and incubation space. Within the university, we continue to develop our internal resources for innovation and entrepreneurship as well. I was so pleased to recently reauthorize the Chancellor's Gap Fund to provide critical bridge funding for innovations that have commercial potential but they just require more experiments or prototypes to attract investors and partners. For student innovators, the Big Idea Center is moving into a new space on Forbes Avenue this summer, and the Big Idea Advantage Fund has begun providing pre-seed investments to Pitt student startups. So Western Pennsylvania's innovation engine has come a long way, and it's only gathering steam. That bodes well for current and future innovation teams like those that we celebrate tonight. Before I go, I want to congratulate all of the Pitt innovators who reached important milestones on their journey this year, and I know there are many. Whether you submitted an invention disclosure, were issued a patent, won a pitch competition, launched a startup, or kicked off an industry collaboration, tonight's celebration is here for you. Well done. Have a fantastic time this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor, for that excellent insight on the expansion of our innovation ecosystem here at Pitt and in the region. We're grateful to you and the Board of Trustees, together with our region's foundations and our local, state, and federal representatives, for your steadfast support, which has helped make this progress possible. It's largely due to these investments that we've achieved such exceptional growth of innovation and entrepreneurship activity over the past five plus years at the University of Pittsburgh. We look forward to many great things to come. Today, we pause in celebration of those individuals who are determined to change the world through their dedication to bringing their big ideas and groundbreaking research to life as new products and services that benefit humankind. Innovators like Professor of Plastic Surgery, Casey Mara, whose encounters with soldiers injured by IEDs have led her to exciting innovations in healing large gap nerve injuries. And Eric Beckman, Professor of Chemical Engineering, who is leading several initiatives to tackle the momentous problem of plastic waste. We celebrate Pitt startup Ligenesis, which is commercializing the work of Professor of Pathology Eric Lagasse. The company is in clinical trials on a revolutionary technology to grow functioning liver tissue by transplanting liver progenitor cells into lymph nodes. 
and the student startup, Hard.io, which has developed a new digital diagnostic platform to help clinicians more quickly identify cardiovascular disease at a fraction of the cost. We're also recognizing the important role that our volunteer mentors play in helping these innovators, many of whom are just being introduced to innovation and entrepreneurship, to navigate this exciting new territory for them. Finally, we also celebrate the work that Pitt's Institute for Entrepreneurial Excellence is doing to grow the region's small business community as we emerge from the pandemic. Without further ado, let's get to this year's award presentations. We begin with Cheatham Benam, our Manager of Faculty Innovation and Commercialization Outreach, who will present this year's Emerging Innovator Award. Hello, I'm Cheetan Benam, Manager of Faculty Innovation and Commercialization Outreach at the Innovation Institute. I'm thrilled to present 2022 University of Pittsburgh Office of Innovation and Entrepreneurship's Emerging Innovator Award to Casey Mara, Professor of Plastic Surgery and Bioengineering. The Emerging Innovator Award is presented to an early to mid-career PIT faculty member who has demonstrated an extraordinary commitment to achieving impact for their research through commercial translation and a dedication to mentoring the next generation of innovators and entrepreneurs. Since arriving at PIT in 2002, Dr. Mara has been a tireless innovator around the problem of repairing large gap nerve injuries. She was inspired in this work after receiving funding from the Department of Defense for her research and meeting soldiers who had suffered significant nerve damage from combat wounds. Since that time, she has challenged herself to help people like them live more independent and fulfilling lives by translating her research from the bench top to the bedside. Dr. Mara and her lab have demonstrated in animal studies the ability to restore up to 80% of nerve function in large gap injuries through the application of a biodegradable tube containing a time-release protein growth factor. Looking beyond battlefield injuries, Dr. Mara is hopeful that her nerve guide device could have applications for people injured in car or machinery accidents who suffer facial nerve paralysis, and for newborn nerve injuries incurred during delivery, or for nerve damage due to tumor removal and diabetic neuropathy. Dr. Mara has published more than 140 peer-reviewed articles in the areas of tissue engineering and regenerative medicine, including a landmark paper that was among the first to examine the effects of adipose stem cells in peripheral nerve gaps. She was named Vice Chair for Research of the Department of Plastic Surgery in 2018. During her time at the university, she has submitted 23 invention disclosures to the Innovation Institute has been issued six patents on her discoveries and has had her innovations licensed six times, including the formation of three startup companies. This puts her in the top handful of women innovators in the university's history. With her research showing continuing promise, Dr. Mara began to plan for the launch of her own company, Nerve Repair Technologies, in 2018. Dr. Mara is presently raising a seed round and preparing to hire a CEO to help the company take its next steps towards an application to the Food and Drug Administration to conduct clinical trials. She has also demonstrated an exceptional commitment to training the next generation of innovators. Her tissue engineering laboratory consists of more than 20 members, where she trains them to always keep in mind the potential benefit to people that their research might have. Dr. Mara also runs an outreach program for high school students entitled Research Opportunities for High School Students, thus exposing young students to tissue engineering at an early age. I'm pleased to present to you the 2022 Office of Innovation and Entrepreneurship Emerging Innovator Award recipient, Dr. Casey Mara. Congratulations on this honor, and we look forward to many more impactful discoveries to come. Good afternoon. I'm honored to receive this year's Emerging Innovator Award. Thank you to the Innovation Institute for this award, and also thank you for your help over the many, many years that I've been on this road to innovation. I especially would like to thank Janice Panza and Alex Ducre for all of their help and patience. I'd like to thank the entrepreneurs and residents as well. I think I've met with every single one of them. I'd like to thank my chair, Peter Rubin, for being so supportive of my efforts while still maintaining my position in the Department of Plastic Surgery. 
I'd also like to thank my lab members. I wouldn't be here without them. They're amazing and they have been through the years. And finally, I'd like to thank my friends and family for not only their support, their emotional support, but their financial support as well. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Rhonda Schult, the director of the Big Idea Center, Pitt's hub for student innovation and entrepreneurship. Today, I'm thrilled to present the Student Innovators of the Year to Utgers Jane, Adam Bucci, and Michael Leisure, founders of Hard.io. Hard.io is a digital diagnostics company that brings the power of AI to help emergency providers detect heart abnormalities more quickly, more accurately, and for a fraction of the cost. And this cloud-based AI algorithm also allows for easy implementation into existing clinical infrastructure. This team has made incredible progress and has had many accomplishments since starting their entrepreneurial journey through the Big Idea Center. They were granted a breakthrough device by the FDA in the fall of 2019, were awarded first place in $25,000 in the 2020 Liftoff Pittsburgh competition, named the most VC-backable startup at the Regional Venture Capital Investment Competition in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and were a finalist in the prestigious Rice Business Plan Competition. But most recently, Hard.io received one of the first investments from the new Big Idea Advantage Fund, a donor-supported investment fund to help launch Pitt student startups. We are excited to honor Hard.io and celebrate their successes. We look forward to following their progress and supporting them as they continue their clinical trials and studies. Now join us in congratulating them as 2022 Pitt Student Innovators of the Year. I think that we were chosen because, you know, people, under, people are starting to understand exactly how innovative and amazing this technology could be and how many lives that it could impact and save. And they might believe in us to bring that to, into fruition and uh, bring that into reality. And that's something that we feel very honored by and something that, you know, we're very humbled by because, you know, we're still uh, people who are, you know, fresh out of college trying to do something with their lives. Um, and in terms of who I should thank, especially uh, the previous director of the Big Idea Center, Babs Carrier, the current uh, Big Idea Center director, uh, Rhonda, and all the entrepreneurs and res residents that we've worked with um, over the years. It's definitely been a long journey and a long ride, and it's not stopping anytime soon, but it's, uh, we wouldn't be here without them. So we have three co-founders, myself, we have Adam Butchie, who is a, another PhD student at the University of Pittsburgh, and Michael Leisure, who was, who's an alumni of the University of Pittsburgh. I met Michael my freshman year of college here at Pitt, and I met Adam in graduate school. And we're surrounded by amazing advisors, primarily John Maris, who's our chairman of the board. He exited Tandem Life to Livanova, and then we have a clinical advisory board uh, filled with prominent cardiologists, Dr. Mintz, uh, Dr. Kovaleski and Dr. McCormick. Uh, I feel really honored to have won the award and I really hope that I can lead a charge of the next generation of entrepreneurs that come out of Pitt. Hello, I'm Peter Allen, Executive Director of Innovation and Strategy at the Innovation Institute. I am pleased to present the Office of Innovation and Entrepreneurship's 2022 Startup of the Year Award to Ligenesis, and specifically to its founding scientist, Eric Lagasse, Associate Professor of Pathology, and its CEO, Michael Hufford. Ligenesis is a wonderful example of the high caliber of startups that Pitt is producing in ever greater numbers as groundbreaking science is combined with the support and resources of an expanding innovation ecosystem at Pitt and in the Pittsburgh region. For over a decade, Dr. Lagasse has been researching the regeneration of a variety of organ tissue types as part of the McGowan Institute of Regenerative Medicine. This kind of work at the McGowan Institute represents the progression of discovery from the pioneering organ transplantation work of the late Dr. Thomas Starzl. A eureka moment occurred when Dr. Lagasse discovered that hepatocyte cells of the liver, when engrafted into the lymph nodes, first in mice, and after being successful there, then in pigs, will grow functional liver tissue. In effect, the lymph nodes acted as bioreactors inside the body, enabling the engrafted cells to proliferate, vascularize, 
and exert life-saving effects in multiple small and large animal preclinical models. The discovery portended the possibility of growing ectopic liver tissue that would potentially extend the lives of people suffering end-stage liver disease, bridging them to a potential transplant or even eliminating the need for a transplant at all. Dr. Lagasse took the discovery through the Innovation Institute's first gear commercialization program, where he worked to discover the value the innovation could have for potential customers. It helped that Dr. Lagasse had previous experience working in the biotech industry before entering academia. And that experience enabled him to stay focused on the translational steps required to move an academic discovery into a drug development program. During this time, he was introduced to an entrepreneur in residence at the Innovation Institute, Michael Hufford. Dr. Hufford, a veteran life sciences executive and two-time Pitt alumnus who had several startup exits under his belt, was impressed through the solid preclinical work that Dr. Lagasse and his co-founder Paolo Fonts, a transplant surgeon who had trained with Dr. Starzl, had done to lay a strong preliminary regulatory framework. Soon after incorporating, the company moved its corporate headquarters into LifeX, the life sciences accelerator and incubator launched by Pitt and proceeded to raise investment rounds totaling $7 million as it performed the final IND enabling preclinical work agreed to within the, with the FDA. At the end of 2020, Ligenesis raised an additional 11 million investment round and announced it had received FDA clearance for its IND to conduct a phase 2A study of the safety, tolerability and efficacy of its first in class novel cell therapy for patients with end stage liver disease, which is currently in progress. If successful, Ligenesis' cell therapies would enable a single donated liver to treat 75 or more patients, representing a remarkable leap of efficiency over the standard of care today, where one donated organ treats one patient. Ligenesis' pipeline includes cell therapies for the pancreas, kidneys and thymus, using lymph nodes as bioreactors to grow functional ectopic tissues. Most recently, it has also begun a program for the treatment of inborn areas of metabolism in infants that has demonstrated positive in vitro results. These life-threatening disorders make the body unable to properly metabolize food into energy. The company last spring moved into offices in the city's Squirrel Hill neighborhood and is poised for incredible growth right here in Pittsburgh. It gives me great pleasure to present the 2022 Startup of the Year Award to Drs. Eric Lagasse and Michael Hufford of Ligenesis. Thank you so much, Dr. Allen. We are genuinely thrilled to be awarded the 2022 Startup of the Year from the University of Pittsburgh. Um, I'm Michael Hufford, uh, co-founder and CEO of Ligenesis. I wanna start by thanking Evan Fasher, who's been a tireless supporter of ours, really um, from the very start as well as Dr. Lorenzo Saletti, who uh, originally introduced me to Eric and uh, uh, Lagasse and Paolo Fontes and really started the whole journey with Ligenesis. And I would like to thank first the people that work in my lab that makes this possible, particularly uh, the two first people that work in the project, uh, Junji uh, Komori and Toshitaka uh, Popo. Uh, both of them are now surgeon. They were really great. Um, <clears throat> then also other people that help to move the project along. Uh, Aaron DeWard was one of them, and then Giovanna Francipan and Bing Han. And finally, the transition from the mouse into the pig with Paolo Fontes, which is also very important. Now on the Ligenesis side, I would like to thank uh, Dylan Dinardo from uh, UPMC Enterprise, who really helping us to put together a business presentation. Uh, then uh, Paul Petrovich from the first year program, that really help us to put this together into a, a, a nice package for the company, uh, the, the, the development of the company. And finally, the long-term support that we, I got from Bill Wagner of the McGowan Institute for Genetic Medicine. He's a director there and uh, George Michelopoulos, the chair of the pathology. And the last thing I'll say is, you know, there's a lot of talk about the bench to bedside 
translation. And over the past four years, that's, that's the journey that we've been on. We are, uh, just enrolled our first patient in our phase 2A clinical trial for patients with end-stage liver disease. And so we also now have to thank not only the enormous clinical staff supporting that work, um, but also the patients themselves now that um, are enrolling in the trial. So thanks to all of them. And again, thank you so much for this award. Yeah, thank you. I'm Paul Petrovich, Assistant Director of Business Development at the Pitt Innovation Institute, where I oversee our First Gear Technology Commercialization Program. In my role with First Gear, it never ceases to amaze me when Pitt faculty and student innovators challenge themselves to stretch and grow while starting out on their journey of innovation and entrepreneurship, which is most often a completely new territory for them. Equally inspiring are the individual business mentors who freely give of their time and their experience to work one-on-one -on -one with our Pitt innovators to help them think beyond the science of their discoveries to consider how potential customers will use their innovation in their daily job routines. That so many alumni and friends of the university step forward to provide this indispensable mentorship is a testament to the generous entrepreneurial spirit of our university and our region. It also reflects the spirit of the late James Hanlon, known to most of us as Chip, who was one of our original entrepreneurs in residence when the Innovation Institute was formed in 2013. Chip was always a selfless advocate for Pitt students and faculty who dreamed that their ideas and discoveries could change the world. We keep his spirit alive through the James Chip Hallen Volunteer Mentor Award, which recognizes an individual who demonstrates extraordinary dedication to assisting Pitt innovators achieve societal impact for their discoveries. It is my privilege to introduce John and Sarah as the 2022 recipient of the Chip Hanlon Volunteer Mentor Award. Following a successful sales and business development career in healthcare, John embarked on a second career as a teacher, teaching business and computer and information technology at the City Charter High School for seven years before launching his own consulting firm. John's passion as a teacher is evident in his work with Pitt Innovation Teams, where he has put in countless hours helping these teams understand the value their innovation might provide to customers, how to develop a feasible go-to-market plan, and how to tell a compelling story to potential investors. He has mentored three teams through the First Gear program and the Michael Wells Student Healthcare Competition with innovations ranging from developing a first-of-its-kind probiotic bacteria as a novel approach to weight control, a program for helping children in the autism spectrum developing reasoning skills, and developing a 3D printing system for enhancing dentistry education. John's volunteer activity isn't limited to his work with Pitt Innovators. He has also been a construction volunteer with Habitat for Humanity, a block watch leader for the Southside Community Council, and has served as a director for the Allegheny Land Trust. It is our hope that he continues to share his wisdom with many Pitt Innovation teams to come. Congratulations to the 2022 James Chip Halen Mentor of the Year, John and Sarah. Hi, I'm John and Sarah, and I am very uh, pleased and very humbled to have been selected as the Volunteer Mentor of the Year uh, at the Innovation Institute at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm humbled because of the great legacy of mentors before me, starting with Chip Hamlin and moving forward through all the years and currently. Uh, it's a, a fabulous group of people, and I'm especially uh, lucky because I love uh, the mentoring. Uh, it's just something that's so much fun for me. Uh, the uh, innovators that come along, their eagerness, their courage, the hard work, and the effort they put in to be commercialized technology and move from just being an innovator to someone that could get that commercialization going. Uh, and so it's a crazy, uh, lucky experience for me. And as you can tell, um, I love adventure. I am currently uh, recording this from the top of uh, Cow Pocket Mountain, I believe, in southern, in uh, northern Georgia. And um, I am hiking the Appalachian Trail. So uh, it's, I'm on my way to Maine. And one of my small regrets, but it's not too big a regret, is that I won't be able to do any mentoring until I get back in the fall. And I'll look forward to being part of the next cohort I can I participate in. So once again, thank you to everybody. Thank you to the innovators, the staff at the Innovation Institute, and all the great mentors that I've had the pleasure to work with and work with today. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Robert Stein. I'm the Executive Director of the Institute for Entrepreneurial Excellence at the University of Pittsburgh. Ashley Taylor's collection is our selection for Small Business of the Year under $1 million and has all the hallmarks of a true entrepreneurial journey. Discovering an unmet need for an underserved population, creating products to fill that void and ultimately making that product available to more customers. Ashley Hall began her Ashley Taylor's collection of natural hair products in 2020, designed especially for black hair. Her desire to start her business was born from her work placing children in foster care as a caseworker with Allegheny County, following her graduation from Pitt School's social work. In addition to having her products for sale on Pitt campuses, she's continuing to expand availability with movement toward having her line in local and national stores. She has also partnered with foster agencies across the state to include her products in their emergency bags for foster children and has pursued opportunities to have them available for hospital patients as well. Although running a business takes a great deal of focus and effort, Ashley remains a full-time social worker and is still involved with social welfare organizations, keeping her rooted in the positive purpose for which her business began. A business that starts with the purpose to help others in need is one that we all can stand behind. We commend Ashley for her work and for her dedication to helping others. And thus, it is our pleasure to recognize Ashley Taylor's collection as the University of Pittsburgh's 2022 Small Business of the Year under $1 million in sales. Congratulations, Ashley. Hi, my name is Ashley Hall, owner of Ashley Taylor's collection and all natural hair care line. I'm overwhelmed with gratitude to have been selected to receive Pitt Small Business of the Year. I'm so honored to have my work recognized in this way by the university. Many hours went into Ashley Taylor's collection and it means so much to me that the work I'm passionate about also resonates with others. I started my business in my final semester of undergrad while interning at Children, Youth and Families. A large amount of black children are placed in transracial homes where their foster parents aren't aware how to maintain their natural hair or what products to use. I now partner with foster agencies in Allegheny County to provide my hair products to children in foster care. I'm also honored to have my products in the university store on fifth for black students to access. This accomplishment is not something I had to do alone, and there are many others who deserve to share in this award. I would like to thank my mentor, Megan Slavik at Pitt's SBDC for all the resources, connections, and motivation that kept me going. I would also like to thank the faculty at the School of Social Work for believing in me and pushing me to be the social worker that I am today. I will continue in my efforts to be a support to the Black community and look forward to expanding with organizations such as UPMC, Giant Eagle, and Target. I'm humbled and appreciative. Thank you and good night. Hello, my name is Bob Stein and I'm the Executive Director of the Institute for Entrepreneurial Excellence at the University of Pittsburgh. Every year, the IEE works with thousands of companies from startups and sole proprietorships to some of Western Pennsylvania's most respected and established ventures. This year, as our Celebration of Innovation honoree for a business with revenue over $1 million, we are recognizing a family-owned company that gives back to the community continually innovates with its offerings and brings smiles to the faces of its customers and cookies alike, Eaton Park Hospitality Group. Eaton Park has been a family owned business since the mid 1970s and is headed by Jeff Broadhurst, a second generation business leader who took over as CEO from his father, Jim Broadhurst in 2008. Community is at the core of everything Eaton Park does from youth sports sponsorships to company wide charitable campaigns. In the last year alone, they've supported more than 1,600 nonprofit organizations, including over 20 United Way agencies and food banks in every community the Eaton Park Hospitality Group does business. They also celebrated their 43rd Year of Caring for Kids campaign to support children's hospitals in 14 states. Eaton Park Hospitality Group also has been recognized by the Pittsburgh Business Times as one of the best places to work and has been a longtime leader in sustainability and supporting local food producers as well. With a business portfolio reliant on dining, the pandemic put its core revenue streams in jeopardy. But Eaton Park was able to pivot to take out dining with curbside delivery, keeping customers and employees safe while remaining a strong presence in the communities they've served during these uncertain times. 
A company that values its employees and its community as much as it does its customers is deserving of recognition. And that is why it is my pleasure to recognize Eaton Park Hospitality Group as the University of Pittsburgh's Business of the Year over $1 million in sales. Congratulations. Wow, what an honor. Thank you so much, Bob. On behalf of everyone at Eaton Park Hospitality Group, I wanna thank the Institute for Entrepreneur Excellence for this honor. And when I think about innovation, it's innovation that has kept us in business for over 70 years now. It's something we think about all the time. It's also one of our five core values. Another thing we think about all the time is the privilege that we have to be housed in Western Pennsylvania. Our homes here just like yours. It's a privilege to serve our guests each and every day with fabulous service and great food. And it's also a privilege to be able to give back to the community in which we all live and work in and play in, just like Pitt. So thanks again for this great honor. We truly appreciate it. And most importantly, hail to Pitt. Throughout the University of Pittsburgh existence, it has attracted individuals with a pioneering spirit coupled with the determination to push the boundaries of scholarship to confront the most urgent issues and problems of their times. Hi, I'm Rob Rutenbar, Pitt's Senior Vice Chancellor for Research, and today I'm honored to introduce one of those pathbreaking innovators, Eric Beckman, as the 2022 recipient of the Marlon Mickle Outstanding Innovator Award from the Office of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Dr. Beckman is Distinguished Service Professor and the George M. Bevere Professor of Engineering at the Swanson School of Engineering, where he's also Director Emeritus of the Mascaro Center for Sustainable Innovation. His three-decade track record as an inventor began with his prolific research that has resulted in more than 200 peer-reviewed journal articles, 26 book chapters, and receipt of 39 U.S. patents, with many more pending. But the numbers only begin to tell the story of the impact he is making through the translation of his work from the lab to the market. After a short stint in industry, Dr. Beckman hit the ground running upon arriving at Pitt, receiving a Young Investigator Award from the National Science Foundation in 1992. It didn't take long for him to demonstrate an entrepreneurial streak. In 1997, the university licensed his metal solvent extraction technology to a new startup, Normex Incorporated. Then, in 2005, North Haven Specialty Chemicals was founded based on his monomer and polymer discoveries. In 2006, he co-founded Cohera Medical around his discovery of a resorbable surgical adhesive. He subsequently took a brief entrepreneurial leave of absence at Pitt to serve as Cohera's chief science officer. The company's first product, Tissue Glue, was awarded the Edison Award Gold Medal in the category of surgical aids. One key way that Pitt innovators can achieve impact for their research is to collaborate with industry. In addition to the companies that he has founded, Dr. Beckman has worked effectively with several other companies, having co-authored patents with Lion Dell Chemical, Bayer Corp, PPG Incorporated, and BASF AG. He has also served as scientific advisor to several startups. As his role as a scientist and innovator flourished, so has his role as an educator with a distinct focus on teaching the skills of innovation and entrepreneurship in addition to basic science. Within a decade of his arrival at Pitt, he was named chair of the Department of Chemical and Petroleum Engineering. Dr. Beckman took bold action in this role by applying for and receiving funding from the Heinz Endowments to create a sustainable entrepreneurship course. He followed that with a three-course innovation sequence, introduction to business principles, product design for chemical engineers, and chemical product prototyping. These courses have inspired numerous student startups at Pitt, including two recent winners of the $25,000 top prize of the Randall Family Big Idea Competition, the annual Student Innovation and Entrepreneurship Competition hosted by the Office of Innovation and Entrepreneurship's Big Idea Center. Shortly after becoming department chair, Dr. Beckman co-founded the Mascaro Center for Sustainable Innovation, with the mission of catalyzing sustainability innovation and education across the university and in the region. And now, Dr. Beckman has taken on the global problem of plastic waste. With a grant from the MacArthur Foundation and Nine Sigma, in collaboration with Think Beyond Plastic, he is leading a team to develop innovations that can be marketable at scale 
to reduce the amount of plastics that end up being burned or buried in landfills or make their way into the world's waterways and oceans. His team proposes using nanoengineering to alter the structure of polyethylene to create a recyclable material that can replace unrecyclable multi-layered packaging while providing the same freshness, UV light protection, and ability to hold inks for labeling that the multi-layer products provide. More recently, Dr. Beckman has been instrumental in establishing a new collaboration with Covestro LLC and the Mascaro Center. The Covestro Circular Economy Program represents the first graduate level circular design academic program in the US to specifically address the challenge of global waste and material use by designing sustainability into new products from base materials and construction to packaging, delivery, and life expectancy. The program aims to create opportunities for the research in education and innovative advancement of circular economy principles that begin with academia and fuel real world solutions designed to save the planet. Among his many awards and honors are the 2002 Presidential Green Chemistry Award and three Carnegie Science Awards. Two are in the environmental category, awarded in 2004 and 2007, and one in the advanced materials category in 2012. Earlier this year, he was named a fellow of the National Academy of Inventors. And today, we add one more to his well-deserved list. Please join me in honoring Dr. Eric Beckman as the 2022 recipient of the Marlon Mickel Outstanding Innovator Award. Hello all, my thanks to the Innovation Institute for selecting me as the 2022 uh, Marlon Mickel Outstanding Innovator. Um, I was a colleague of Marlon for many years. He was really an inventor's inventor. He generated patents throughout his multi-decade career at Pitt, uh, even after he retired, he was still creating inventions and generating patents. Many of these led to um, licenses and spin-out companies uh, long before this was common practice at Pitt. He was, Marlon was truly ahead of his time, and so it's, it's very nice to get an award that was named after him. Um, pursuing innovation um, and invention hasn't always been um, smooth at, at Pitt. It's not always been a straightforward path um, that the Innovation Institute has created over the past decade. Um, back in the day, there were a lot of obstacles uh, in the pursuit of translational science, of, of doing things that led to inventions and ultimately innovations. Um, so I have to thank my, my former dean, uh, Jerry Holder, for always supporting my forays into innovation. No matter how dubious they may have seemed to him at the time, he was always there and had my back. Um, Jerry was a no-nonsense kind of dean, um, but now and then he could surprise you by uh, supporting what seemed even to me sometimes as crazy ideas. Um, but, but Jerry, again, was a, was a true supporter and, um, and was very helpful when I needed him. Case in point, um, almost 20 years ago, um, I developed a, a potentially useful internal surgical adhesive in my lab. Um, we needed time and space to, to help grow the uh, associated startup company, Cohera, and Jerry allowed me to take a two-year leave of absence, um, even though no one in the School of Engineering had ever taken an entrepreneurial leave before. Um, Jerry allowed me to take the leap into the unknown, and, and I'll be forever grateful for it, uh, to him for that. Uh, Cohera couldn't have happened without um, an incredible team of employees there. Truly one of the, the most impressive teams I've ever worked with. Some of them were, were Pitt alums, former undergraduates who I had had in class, and then watching them blossom as innovators was, was wonderful. It was amazing and mildly terrifying uh, watching surgeons take something that had started out as an interesting goo in a flask in my lab and put it into patients. It was gratifying to hear patients actually thank me for my science. I'm an engineer and no one has ever thanked me for my science before and, and so this was, was kind of remarkable. It's been a pleasure to watch um, how Chancellor Gallagher, since he arrived in 2014, has worked to create a welcoming environment for innovation at, at Pitt. The innovation environment now is, is positively unrecognizable um, from that when I first arrived in 1989, and that's a very good thing, and, and I very much appreciate what the Chancellor has done. Pitt continues to build a culture of innovation, thanks to, to people like Pat, Rob Rutenbar, Evan Fatcher, 
and, and a whole host of other people who have, have been very supportive of, of um, making Pitt not just a research powerhouse, but an innovation powerhouse as well. I've been fortunate while at Pitt to have some, some really great mentors in, uh, in the realm of innovation. Uh, one who altered my career path in ways that I never could have imagined was, was the late Jack Mascaro. Um, in 2003, Jack pushed, Jack always pushes, or always pushed, he was, he was great at that. He pushed me to go beyond what I would call my scientific comfort zone of green chemistry to embrace a much broader topic, that being sustainability. Um, I had no formal training in sustainability. I wasn't even clear as to what it was, but, but Jack, the consummate innovator, um, saw it as the future of all engineering, and it turns out he was right. Um, Jack underwrote the Mascaro Center for Sustainable Innovation, which for almost the past 20 years has served as a nexus for sustainability research, education, and outreach at Pitt. Um, driven by the force of nature, that was Jack, um, and strong support from former Provost Beeson and current Provost Ann Cudd, um, MCSI has been able to do an awful lot in, in the area of sustainability with a small but quite marvelous staff. My colleagues, Gina Kowalczyk, Melissa Billick, David Sanchez, and Ellie Caden. Um, I can't thank Jack and his, his family enough for decades of support for what we're trying to do with sustainability. Helping to build MCSI has been truly a joy and, and one of the highlights of, of my innovation career. Of late, really recent times, I've devoted most of my entrepreneurial energy to trying to prep the next generation of innovators. And I'm very grateful to the Chemical Engineering Department for allowing me to create our product innovation sequence, which is a series of courses designed to, to teach chemical engineering undergrads how to be product designers and innovators. Um, fewer than one in seven chemical engineering departments even offers a single course in product design. So I'm, I'm quite grateful to, to the chemical engineering department for allowing me to once again go out on a limb with something that, that uh, most departments don't do. Um, teaching students how to think and act like innovators is, is a challenge and can drive you absolutely bonkers at times, but the payoff is seeing their success. Um, watching former students like Emily Siegel, who's co-founder of Trek Gum, and Blake Dubay, co-founder of Aeronix and Pawprint Oxygen, watching them succeed in the marketplace is, is, is a delight. Last but not least, these decades of, of success and failure, sacrifice and fun, could not have been possible without the love of my wife, Joanne, and the kids, Ariane and Austin. They're always my foundation and my sounding board. Thank you again, Pitt, for, um, and the Innovation Institute, uh, for this honor and, and for creating an entrepreneurial sandbox where anyone can play. And I think that's fabulous. Hail to Pitt and rock on. Thank you for joining us for the 2022 Celebration of Innovation. I hope that you've been inspired by the passion and ingenuity of Pitt innovators who are seeking to change the world with their ideas and discoveries. You can stay informed of all the exciting things happening with Pitt innovation and entrepreneurship by subscribing to our newsletters and blogs, which you can find at innovation.pitt.edu, as well as following us on social media. As we conclude, here is a listing of Pitt innovators who have achieved important innovation milestones over the past year. Thank you and hail to Pitt.